Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought I'd do some deaf awareness, uh, some tips and tricks to communicate well with a deaf person or hard of hearing person, um, uh, including how to get their attention, how to communicate if you don't know sign language and they're struggling to understand and there's a communication breakdown how to get over that barrier and a few other tricks and useful information that I think would be good for you to know. So yeah that's today's video I hope you enjoy. Um, if you have any questions or anything you're not sure you want to ask about deaf awareness that I don't include in this video or something you want to know please 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 let me know in the comments below and I will get back to you. Awesome, let's start. Okay, so I'm gonna start with how to get a deaf person, deaf person's attention. Um, so, some obvious ones is obviously walking up, tapping to them, making sure that you're facing them and then communicate. Another one is the light switch. So say for example, you're on the opposite side of the room turn the light switch on and off and it flashes I look around to the light switch who's turned on and off they've got their attention you wave your hand you might see a lot of times deaf people go it's like I'm trying to get your attention hello pay attention to me attention attention so that's another way you can bang if there's a table bang 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 feel that the hands on there feel it attention and also not very common but it's possible um if you're on the floor stamping your feet it might have a chance of trying to get their attention and if all that fails walk up to them get that tap them start to communicate or text them if they're on the phone like basic ones but the other ones are the best ones to use okay so how to communicate with a deaf person if there's a communication breakdown so this if you don't sign and this person struggling to lip read or can't hear can't understand the words there's a few different options that you have you can write it down and have a conversation through writing you can use your phone text it and show it show it to them if there's a person who signs about, like an interpreter, interpreter, communication support worker, or any friend who's hearing, or anybody who can understand sign language and translate and help with communication, then you can ask them. Um, a system that's new, I believe, where you can speak into the app and it can translate into BSL and that's another way um, because sometimes for some deaf people who haven't had the right access and support in education English is struggling for them and so if you write or type in English well they can see and understand the words and might not understand what you mean which is also means you can just explain it better in the simpler words or just better way of explaining through writing and typing. But yeah, those are a few options. Um, and now if you are communicating with a deaf person through speech, then you must, must, must make sure you have eye contact with them at all times. So they know you're talking to them and you're engaging in the conversation make sure that there's nothing covering your lips make sure that you've got a clear lip pattern that you're not over exaggerating it because then it means that it becomes difficult to understand what you're saying and it just gets pss, like oh, what are you saying uh, make sure you're speaking clear with a clear voice um, not shouting or anything like that try and use um, 
hand gestures where you can. So for example, if you're talking about something, then just be like this. If it's close to you, this. Um, and then go into the conversation, say, say TV, Netflix, TV, TV show, TV, what do you watch, sort of thing. Um, so just make sure you're clearly you're facing them. Um, try and make sure that there is no noise in the background um, so they can actually pick up on what you're saying. Uh, make sure that your face isn't in the light so your lip pattern gets blinded. Um, make sure you're not having two different conversations at once like you're in the middle of a of a conversation with one person and then trying to start a conversation with the deaf person just make sure that you focus on that one conversation just so they're not com confused because you're talking to them and talking to them if that makes sense that makes sense I hope it makes sense <laughs> so now I'm going to talk about different hearing devices so have things simple things like hearing aid now, there's different types of hearing aids you can get you can get a dome which looks like this and like there's like you can get a dome that only has like one bit here or like three bits like one two three I only have two um, or you can get a mold which covers up your full ear and it goes and sits there and then rounds your ear um, and you can get anything you like put in there, colour, glitter, animals, like a little picture of something you like. Um, usually, I don't know if it's still the same, but we could choose from like a catalogue and pick what we wanted. Um, and sometimes these can come in a different colour, so I've had um, blue, I know you can get lots of different colours, anything you like. Um, and what they do with them for all deaf people, but they won't work for all deaf people. For example, if you're profoundly deaf, that doesn't really help you, or if you're severely deaf, it doesn't really, really help you. They're more fitted to people with um, with mild to moderate hearing loss. But not to say that if you have a hearing aid and you are profoundly deaf, that like. It is useless because sometimes it does work but it's still very difficult because it's only so much it can help um, because it doesn't really fix your hearing doesn't really really improve it it just makes things louder it doesn't make it clearer necessarily so yeah it just makes things louder now with the hearing aid you can get something called a radio radio aid which is a little shoe that goes on the bottom of your hearing aid and usually you can ask the teacher of a deaf for that um, and it goes there and you have like a separate uh, microphone and if you're in school you give it to the teacher or you give it to whoever's talking at the time and what happens is the microphone picks up the sound and it goes straight to the shoe into your hearing aid and um, allows you to hear more and better because for example if you're in a classroom it's very loud then it's gonna be difficult for you to hear because of the background noise and you can't pick up on all the words because other people are talking over the teacher or whatever but this allows for the for the sound to be more diverted to the teacher so you can learn better um, and then for people who are profoundly deaf and sometimes severely deaf you have a cochlear implant which needs an operation so what happens is there's a little coil that attaches to your cochlea in your brain here with a magnet which um, means that the processor can then attach there and what happened is on the processor which is like this but a lot a lot bigger there's two microphones where the sound goes in and instead of going into your ear and through your ear it goes straight to your brain and so it goes it doesn't go through the process of hearing it skips your ear and it goes straight to your brain it attaches to the coil and sends the sound vibrations to your brain and you figure out what they're saying it doesn't make it perfect and um, you have to learn sound again and 
people's voices and words and what they mean and things because at first it sounds like a, a robot which is difficult to pick up and um, it could take up to two full years before it really really starts to work for some people because of how much I have to learn and they go through stages and what happens with that is they turn onto what you can cope with and then you go back like six weeks later and then turn up a little bit more so you're not overwhelmed with sound and just don't want to use it mm -hmm. so that's another thing and the last one I, I want to talk about I don't know a lot about because they're not as common like I know I think a few deaf people have it Bahas and if I understand correctly they're like they're similar to cochlear implants but they're different they don't have the hearing aid part they just attach to the back of here somewhere and I think it's a bone it's like a bone anchored hearing device um so yeah i don't know a lot about that but um and how it works it's fairly new ish um but yeah like i said these hearing devices they don't fix our hearing they don't improve it massively there's still a lot of complications and um we still need small adjustments like things putting the subtitles on the TV, making sure you face us when you talk to us, making sure that you are deaf aware and things like that. Um, but also, this doesn't mean that we can't do anything. We can still drive. I will make this very clear. It is not dangerous for a deaf person to drive. We are very aware and we are able to spot dangers very well. As long as we can see well, we are fine. You will see things always before, before you hear things because you see before you hear. Because light vibrations travel faster than sound, which is why why when there's a thunderstorm you always see lightning before you hear um thunder usually usually depending on the situation outside isn't really but typically usually usually you see lightning before thunder and that's because light travels faster than sound they start at the same time that's why if it's closer you hear them really really close together and if they're further away lightning 10 seconds later thunder that's why you will see before you hear so it doesn't really affect your driving ability um, so we can still drive drive we can still enjoy music we can still dance if we want to um, we can literally do anything that you can at work there's a few deaf people I'm aware, I know, and they have interpreters, so if they need to make a phone call, the interpreter will translate for them, they'll be the voice, and then whatever the person on the phone says, they'll translate to be a cell, and then it's a communication, just through an interpreter, which means we are fully able to do any job that we want. It doesn't stop us just because we're deaf and that if we are to help you should help if there's anything that you can do to help us we should because that gives us the access that we have the right to and the ability for us to do really really well in life the same as a hearing person we're not different we just can't hear very well and that doesn't mean we should be treated different or negatively because of that and yeah i think that's a lot all i've covered is the really most important thing if i have any
questions please ask if you have anything you think I've missed out let me know um, because you always are more able to get more knowledgeable always a possibility like just because I'm deaf doesn't mean I know everything about deafness because everybody's deaf experience is different which means they've had their own complications and situations I might not be aware of and that so I wouldn't know how to deal with that situation until I've experienced it or I know somebody who's experienced it who's told me how they coped with it and then we learn and adapt and it's the same in deaf awareness that is things like deaf community and culture but that's for a different video. If you want that, let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And let me know what you think. And any questions, any songs, anything. Let me know. Okay, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.